Okay, so I, um, I have a few slides here on what we've been doing in Ceph. Uh, is everybody familiar with Ceph? Yeah. A little bit. Okay, so uh, we have an architecture slide uh, right after this. All this, this slide's really talking about is, um, you know, kind of its, its prevalence from an open source solution perspective. Uh, and, you know, the, this graph over here on the right uh, is just talking, and you can kind of see if you squint properly, um, that, uh, you know, from an open stack perspective, uh, Ceph is the, the most deployed uh, backend storage driver under Cinder. Okay, quick architecture slide, you know, really, really high level. Uh, you can have, uh, there's a native Ceph client interface, there's a block device Ceph interface object, and then a file system. Um, but uh, underneath that, uh, Ceph actually stores everything as objects, right? So it's got these different interfaces on top, but everything's stored as an object. And Rados is something you might see occasionally, right? It stands for Reliable Autonomous Distributed Object Store. Uh, so some of the features of it, right? And, and you know, we'll, we'll hop in real quick on uh, kind of some of the stuff we've been doing over the last uh, couple of years. Okay, so this timeline, the stuff you see underneath the arrow is the, the releases, uh, G, H, I and J, um, but the the things you see here in, in the dark boxes are stuff that we've done. Intel's led the effort. Obviously, it's an open source community. These aren't things we do in a vacuum, right? Uh, and then these these kind of dotted line things are things that we're currently um, in the process of doing. A big focus uh, for for us. Um, obviously, we have uh, processors, we have networking solutions, we have SSDs, we have you know uh, our our three cross point based technologies. Um, we're really focused on trying to remove the performance bottlenecks from a software perspective. Right? Uh, so that's that's something we are we're spending a lot of time, energy, and effort on. Uh, okay, so just a, a quick blurb on a couple of tools that, that we open source to, to help the community. Um, you know, when you're developing uh, for Ceph, on Ceph, um, or, in, you know, inside of Ceph, uh, there's, there's going to be a need to actually profile what you're doing. So we open source something called Ctune. Uh, the, the focus that Ctune has is obviously benchmarking, analyzing what you did, uh, visualizing it, and then turning around and, and tuning your software. And then we open sourced uh, Virtual Storage Manager uh, back in 2014. We've continued to, to work with the community to develop that. And the focus of, of that, obviously, is to actually deploy and, and manage your storage, right? So we were, you know, we had a question just a few moments ago um, about, you know, SSDs and, and configuring them. You know, that kind of stuff is, is more of a, uh, you know, system administrator kind of storage solution that you, I think you'd see more regularly um, in, in tools like this. That not saying that's in here, but um, that I think this is the kind of place where you might do things like that. So it, it focuses on deploying clusters, managing them, monitoring them, and orchestrating them. Okay, just a, a quick word on Swift. Swift word on Swift. Yeah. Well done. Um, so, you know, Intel, over the last uh, couple of years, we, we focused on doing uh, two primary things uh, in, in the Swift open source community. One was the creation of what's called storage policies, uh, which in effect gives us kind of the ability to apply qualities of, of service um, for the clusters. And in addition to that, we created, um, obviously, with the community, um, an erasure code policy. Uh, so instead of uh, triple replication or, you know, um, what's kind of the default mechanism, uh, we allowed uh, Swift users to go off and supply different policies. And there was work, right, when we, when we went through and did the initial policy effort, right, there's that and then 
adding specific types of policies sometimes requires um, additional effort, right? And so there was a lot of work that went into creating the erasure code policy. Um, so the erasure code policy in, in Swift, there's a proxy. There's two kind of types of nodes in a, in a Swift cluster. There's a proxy node and a storage node. Proxy nodes tend to be, you know, really heavy, you know, big, uh, fast type of systems, lots of I.O. Um, and then your, your storage systems are, you know, where you have a lot of hard disks, et cetera. So it's more kind of uh, focused on the, the data retention aspects. Uh, so the erasure code policy that, that we created um, with the community uh, really <clears throat> was driven largely at the, the proxy level. And um, with a little bit of help from the storage nodes. Ultimately, you guys are aware of this. Uh, you know, erasure code can reduce, when you're looking at triple replication, can reduce your overall storage media requirements and expenditures by up to 50%. And our Intel you know, storage acceleration library is, is fantastic <coughs> at doing that. Quickly. Okay, um, how much time do I have left? 14 seconds. <laughs> Eight minutes. All right, so let's, let's, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna touch on this quickly. Um, so Copperhead, who's, who's heard of Copperhead? Okay, so open source by, by EMC, something we've been working with them. It's a, a software to find storage controller. Uh, we're trying to, you know, build a community. Uh, we think it's an important problem to solve. Um, you know, when, when you start looking at storage and having storage silos, you, you need something that can go off and be able to, to help you migrate that data, um, manage that, <coughs> automate it. Uh, and so Copperhead was, um, you know, something that we really thought could help end users in that battle. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to create a project that focused on solving them well. Uh, and uh, Copperhead actually has more than just OpenStack integration, right? You can use it with, uh, with VMware, you can use it with Microsoft, and you can use it with cloud-native computing solutions, right? So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's an area of, of big interest for us, um, you know, and, and something that we're hopeful will continue to grow. The key enabler, having a single pane of glass to, to do all that management and orchestration is important, right? Okay, so we'll touch here on SPDK. We have a, a couple of slides, um, and then we'll get right into our demo. Okay, so we, we talked some um, about the performance of the media, um, you know, and the, and the new uh, 3D crosspoint based technologies and Intel Optane SSDs. Um, and you can kind of see in this graph, right, the, the problem is, is shifting, right? <clears throat> it used to be. Hard disks were the bottleneck, right? That's where all the latency came from. You don't even see software really show up. Um, but when you, when you shift over here, going from NAND to 3D crosspoint-based cross solutions, uh, you can see that software is the big problem, right? Obviously, there, there are other challenges, right? Um, your, your Ethernet networking you know, solutions can also be a bottleneck. Uh, but we're really focused on trying to drive down um, the overall cost here with this green box. Uh, this is one we showed last time or something similar to it. Uh, it's really just kind of the high-level architecture picture of, of the storage performance development kit. Uh, there's a lot of different pathfinding things that we're doing in addition to this, but this is kind of what's made makes it up. Uh, some of these pieces are actually already open source. You can go out to um, GitHub and you can pull down the NVMe driver and the CBDMA driver. Um, we're going to demo the NVMF target uh, with this NVMe driver in just a few moments. So the, the real key here is we're solving that performance bottleneck problem. We're actively going off and not only adding components to SPDK, but trying to integrate it into other projects such as Ceph or, or Swift potentially, et cetera.
And this is just a, a quick performance slide. This is actually not NVMF. This is iSCSI. Uh, this is the system configuration. We have eight P3700s, um, and we have three by 40 gig um, networking solution, Intel, in that box. Uh, and then we're using a, a Xeon V3. So you can see over here on the right uh, that using the, the LIO Linux um, in kernel target, uh, you see a little bit shy of two and a half million IOPS using 96% of the CPU in the system. Uh, with SPDK, you see um, about approaching three and a half million at only with only 33% of the CPU used in the system. Uh, and a lot of this is uh, there's a lot of a lot of bottleneck that we know we can go out and actually tweak out of there. Uh, it's just a matter of time, energy, and effort. Uh, so this is using standard Ethernet as opposed to RDMA, which we'll have you know in our next demo. So NVM, uh, NVMe over fabrics. Um, basically, it's taking the concept of uh, NVMe and applying it uh, over uh, a wire. And with the initial focus being on RDMA enabled NICs. 